The coding durability test puts XS through a cycle of 10,000 strums. Through the lens of a microscope, it is clear that XS retains its composition better than other coded strings. Testing complete. <laughs> I'm John Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm with Warren Haynes in the historic Ryman Auditorium. Warren, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Come on, man, it was fabulous watching your sound check and watching you guys tear into that song. Come well, uh, we're easing our way. We've only played it once, and uh, that was before Jeff died. Mm -hmm. and of course, I just teased a little bit at the beginning. The rest of it was just noodling, but uh, we played it one time, uh, and I think we're gonna Hopefully play it again tonight oh, for the second time. God, I was like <laughs> weepy hearing the sound check of it. It's just beautiful, man. Thank you. Yeah, what a loving homage. Well, hey, uh, I know you got you got doors opening in a minute, so we'll be as quick as we can. Let's talk about this. This is your signature, right? This is my signature model, uh, Les Paul, that uh, is based on a, a, a 58 body, 59 neck, burst bucker one, burst bucker two. But the, the most unique thing about it is this switch that uh, engages uh, this buffer preamp that uh, when, oh. when you turn the volume down, the tone doesn't change. So you can have it like a traditional Les Paul or you can have it where the tone doesn't change when you adjust the volume. So it gives you more variety. So that's how you're doing it. Was that engaged right then? No, it, oh, okay. it wasn't. And most of the time, I, I don't have it in, engaged. I only engage it if, if I turn down really low right. and want to get the treble back. Yeah. Uh, no, otherwise, you know, I'm so used to playing Les Pauls and, and I thrive on that tonal change. Right. But it just yeah, gives you a lot more your, options. That's part you of know? your expression. Yeah, and, like. and yeah. you know, I, I've been playing Les Pauls for so long that I... I that's kind of part of the, the vocabulary, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well, uh, that's, that's, so is this an actual, this is one of the models that somebody could, could buy? This is yeah, actually. Yeah, this, this is a prototype uh, of the actual guitar. Yeah, but Fabulous. Yeah, and, and I play these guitars more than, than anything else. Even though I carry a lot of guitars, they're mostly for different tuning. Sure. And then uh, occasionally some of them, uh, just to get a, a different sound, but you know, I, I have a drop D, uh, open D, open G, uh, 12 string and open G, a 12 string and drop D. Uh, I have a, at one point I was carrying a open A guitar around because oh. it's, it's a pain to change them sure. during the show. Cause right. a, as you know, uh, guitars take a little bit to settle in. Yeah. Uh, and then also all my Firebirds are tuned down a half step. Oh, okay. And uh, I have one guitar that's tuned down a half step with the uh, bottom string tuned down an additional whole step that I play on uh, the song Bring On The Music. Uh, I have two different open C tunings. Wow. Uh, one has two E's on the top and one has uh, an E and a C. Uh, no, I'm sorry. One has two C's on the top and a, a drone for the first two strings, and the other one has an E on the top and then a C on the second string. Um, 
So sometimes if I write something or we record something in a certain tuning, then I need that guitar uh, in case we play it. But we don't play the same show every night. We play a different show every night. Right. That's part so, of the magic. And, and, People never know what they're going to get. And it's part of the reason that I have to drag around all these guitars, <laughs> yeah. which I would prefer not to do. Well, let's uh, look at some of these guitars. I think Eric's got another one over here for us. So this is... Uh, a signature model 335 that Gibson made, which is a copy of my 1961 uh, .NET 335. And they did an amazing job. When I saw it, I was like, wow, that's my guitar. It uh. looks exactly like my guitar. The neck feels exactly like my guitar. And it sounds as similarly as they could, could possibly make it. Oh, so uh, what pickups did they go with? Uh, the uh, original PAFs that were in oh, it. Oh, well, uh, and, and so, so it's actually... They, they copied it. Uh, this, has, this has the newer pickups okay. in it. But you know, I, I don't have the, the 61 with me on the road. Yeah. Uh, I leave it at home. But this one uh, definitely sounds and plays very much like my guitar. All right, let's hear it a little bit. God, that's great. You can yeah. hear the the difference in the way the the bass pickup and the treble pickup on those guitars work. They, they're very different from each other. But you have to like blend them in, get a lot of cool sounds and yeah. stuff. You know. Okay, that's that's great. What's Eric got for us next? Uh, oh, this looks that's this, a pretty one. This guitar. This has an interesting story. I've I've been playing this guitar for a, a long time. Um, so, wow, what a top on that. Uh, I usually keep this one tuned to drop D on the bottom. I played this guitar in the Allman Brothers a lot. Um, the story with this guitar is uh, years, years, years ago, I went to the Gibson Custom Shop and said that I was looking for a Tobacco Sunburst Les Paul. Sure. They only had a few at, uh, at the Custom Shop at that time. And I played three or whatever, however many they had, and none of them had like that that feeling like when you play a guitar acoustically without plugging it in, you can always tell a really magical guitar. And none of them had that magic. Um, and my friend Rick Gimbar, who was running the the Gibson Custom Shop at that time, said, "Well, I want you to get one that you love." And he just happened to remember. Uh, this guitar that had been hanging on the wall in his office. He said, what about that one hanging on my wall? And they said, oh, well, uh, it's flawed. We, we can't sell it. He said, well, what do you mean? Well, they, there's two extra screw holes in it where somebody put screw holes in the wrong place. So they were just going to scrap it. So yeah. it had been sitting on his wall for like two years or something. Uh, it had no tuners, uh, no pickups, no electronics. It was just wood. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, "But it was strung up." Was no, it, it, oh, really? nothing. It was just a piece of wood. Oh, yeah. And they said, uh, "He said, how long would it take to put this guitar together?" Uh, it had no tuners on. It. Oh. And uh, they said about fifteen or twenty minutes. So we're at Gibson. Yeah. So uh, we sat around and tried some other guitars and played and stuff. And they brought it out, and. It sounded better than any of the guitars that, that I had been playing. And I was like, well, can I have this one? <laughs> and uh, 
and they're like, yeah, uh, absolutely. They they couldn't sell it legally. They couldn't yeah. they couldn't call it a Les Paul, and so for me, uh, for all the guitars that I had from that time period, this is my favorite one. Huh. And uh, it, had that not occurred, uh, this guitar would probably be in the garbage somewhere. Wow, uh, isn't that great? Yeah, it's like a stray puppy yeah, walking up and that's, licking that's, your hand, and then he's with for the rest of your life. That's <laughs> kind of the way I looked at it. Yeah. Okay, that's a great story. Um, I mean, and it, you know, I, I use it, I mean, it's a really cool guitar all the way around, but I play slide on it a lot. Um, It's a little low at the moment because I, I haven't been playing much slide on it recently. find when you're playing slide do you, have, do you have things set up a little bit higher just the action like or is it a considerable I, difference i usually keep them the same uh there are a couple of guitars where the action is a tiny bit higher but i, I yeah. like to keep my action what i refer as too high for lead and not high enough for slide <laughs> so it, but th that's what i'm comfortable with yeah yeah and but yeah. this one the, the high e is a little too low at the moment because i had it too high in the last few days, and, and we just lowered it, and I'm still kind of tampering with oh, it. God, uh, sounds so I'm great. Gonna, I'm going to have to raise it back up just a tiny bit. Do you remember what pickups they put in it? Uh, I think these, they used to be classic 57s, uh -huh. but I don't know if they still are. Because uh, they still okay. are? Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm one of those guys that if it sounds good, I just leave it. Right. I, I don't really care yeah. uh, what's, what's in a guitar. Yeah. If I pick it up and it sounds good, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so you know, some of my guitars have burst buckers in them. Uh, we we try a bunch of different stuff, and if something sounds good in a certain piece of wood, then we stay with it. Yeah, great. Okay, let's see what's next. What's what, what do you got over there? Look. Uh, okay. So, so this guitar, well, my old guitar tech Brian Farmer, who passed no. away a, a while back labeled all these guitars he named them and and put the labels on them so he could tell them apart in the dark sure this one uh he called the dead bird and the reason is because he actually had this guitar designed himself when i did the dead tour in 2009 oh. uh i wanted something that sounded uh a little bit smaller than the les paul not quite as wide yeah and uh, I had been playing some Firebirds, and he said, well, what about one with many humbuckers? And, there, and so instead of Firebird pickups, there, there are many humbuckers. And I use this guitar occasionally, but I use it on that, that whole tour with the dead. It just has a unique sound that's somewhere in between a Gibson and a Fender. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of bizarre. Uh, cool. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, it's great it's like that is perfect for that dead thing. Yeah, and even for cool bluesy stuff, it's yeah. just, it doesn't have as much gain. Yeah. And it, it uh, it's it's really bright on the top end, but it still has Gibson mid-range. Yeah. Know?
Great, love it. Okay, all very cool. Uh, does Eric have another one for us? One more. Oh. Oh, wow. At one point in time, this was one of two uh, Les Paul 12 strings. Um, and wow. I, I've had this one a long, long time. Uh, again, another uh, guitar that I love due to my association with, with Gibson. And uh, this guitar, uh, it's called Railroad Boy because one of the songs that I play it on is, is the song called Railroad Boy. Um, I also play it on uh, Dark Was the Night, Cold Was the Ground, and, and on uh, So Weak, So Strong. I usually have it tuned to drop D on the bottom. It's a really u unique instrument because I have a couple of Epiphone 12 strings over there that sound beautiful, but they don't sound like this. This has a, a little more girth to it, and, and it also has this coil tap. Oh. So I'm going to take it off. Yeah. So in, in the middle of Railroad Boy, I switch it from one position to another as the band gets louder and right. stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Uh, Gibson, did they ever do a production run of this? Or this they, just... Not this guitar. They did a production run of a 12-string Les Paul, uh, but the headstock was much smaller. Oh, that's a lot of headstock. Yeah, uh, this one's pretty <laughs> enormous. Um, I'm amazed not... it fits in your boat. In your... <laughs> it barely does. Yeah. You have to be really careful with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Oh, that's great. Okay, amazing. Hey, now, let's get into, I want to get into amps and pedals, but maybe we need one more guitar. To oh, get us okay, that. okay. So custom shop Firebird with uh, three P90s that I keep tuned down like all my Firebirds, tuned down a half step. Um, for some reason I really like the way the Firebirds respond to being tuned down like oh, that, yeah. uh, more so than, than a Les Paul. They, that extra brightness um, kind of helps them speak through the, sure. the, the lower tuning. Yeah. And, it, and again, it has a little more of a Fender-esque quality, but it still has the meat uh, of a Gibson. So. Nice top end, but it still has a lot of bottom, yeah. and it, it doesn't sound like a, a, a Strat, so it, it's cool for me. Like if we, as an example, if, if I did a Hendrix song, I'd probably do it on a Firebird instead of a Strat, right? Just to sound a little different. Because that's you, yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's great. Okay, amazing. Now let's talk a little bit about your amps. You're running two of them. 
Uh, they're not run at the same time. It's, it's an either or. Yeah. And this Soldano is uh, one that I've had for a really long time, uh, SLO 100 with my modification, which gives it a lot more low mid-range at a low preamp volume. Uh, when I first started using these guitars, I... I mean, when I first started using Soldano amps, I called Mike Soldano and said, I'm having trouble getting enough bottom end, uh, otherwise I love the sound. And he said, well, that's really strange. Where Where is your preamp set? And I said, it's set on two and a half or three. And he said, oh, well, most people set it much higher. And I said, yeah, but, but I don't I don't want that extra dirt. Yeah. Um, so he said, great, I'll, I'll make a mod to it. So he made this modification here. I had him put a switch. Uh, where you can you can flip the switch and it's a stock Soldano, oh. or you can have my modification. But all my Soldanos have this mod, and it just gives it a much more beef at a low preamp. Gap. Right, because there's such a almost like a metal kind of amp, but and with you, it's not, not that not at all. When you, when you do this, you can yeah. you can set it way cleaner and have have that girth. You know. Oh yeah, that's I, I don't sweet like spot. the the really overdriven sound. Sure. You know? Yeah. That. Yeah. It, uh, it, so this is the. The, the more martial-y side of, of what I'm doing. Yeah. And uh, Eric can tell me if I'm correct. I think these are 75 watt Celestians. Correct. And, yeah. and, uh, and then the Homestead, which is more fendery, uh, is a 100 watt Homestead head. Um, the Homesteads are a continuation of Diaz, when I used to use Caesar oh, Diaz. Oh, sure, of course. Um, Peter McMahon, that uh, that is is now Homestead. He worked with Caesar and carried Caesar stuff forward for a while, and then started making his own gear, which was kind of uh, a continuation of that. Sure. But he's branched off into a lot of other stuff. So I really like these heads. Uh, I think these are Greenback 25s in in this cabinet. Great. So different speakers for the two different amps. Yeah, two uh, totally know. different tones. That's great. And you yeah. just switch as you need that yeah. flavor. Okay. Uh, but I never have them on at the same time. Uh, occasionally in the studio if they're off in another room somewhere. Sure, you know? yeah. Okay. And pedal board wise, looks like you've got, a, you've got the uh, custom audio controller out here. Yeah, uh, all the effects are in drawers in this rack back here. Hmm. Um, well, let's start on the left is a, a bass cut okay. for the homestead. So. Yeah. Sure. Uh, it's the, just like on the fenders when you pull the knob out. Yeah. It, it's basically doing that. Uh, the thing next to it is a, a speed switch and a brake for the Rotosphere Leslie oh, simulator. Right. So I can uh, operate it like it's a real Leslie pedal. Oh, that's great. Um, the There's a Klon Centaur. There's a... Uh, Short delay, long delay, uh, the uh, discombobulator, which was the envelope filter that I was using oh, yeah. earlier, yeah. the old brown octaver, octave pedal. Right. Um, the, uh, there's a digital reverb in there that if I want to use it on the Soldano, which has no reverb, which I use very little, but sometimes. Yeah. Uh, there's a Texas Ranger, which is a, a Diaz boost built uh based around the old top boost of the Vox AC30s, sure. but he made it where you could have uh, low, mid, or high. You could choose which part you wanted oh, to cool. boost. Um, and then there, the the reverse thing. Eric, what is the reverse? That is a hardwired DL8. DL8. DL8, Okay. Which is... Yeah, uh, let's hear that thing. Um, and then the G-Lab Wawa is my signature Wawa. The other pedal is a mid-range boost for the homestead and the volume pedal. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, and most of the time it's just... You and that amp. Most, of the, sound, like, most yeah. of the sounds are just straight in. Yeah. Uh, I started using pedals 
when Government Mule formed because we were a trio and right. sometimes it was nice to have other textures. You were covering a lot of ground. And in the Allman Brothers, I just plugged straight into the amp. Yeah. And a lot of the sounds for Government Mule were that as well. Yeah. Well, Warren, I know you got a show, so thanks for taking the time to hang with this man. What an honor to meet you and hang out with you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Y'all, till next time. Thank you.